I read when uh when Roy Williams retired that, that somebody pointed out that you know he was a concern about the name, image, and likeness bill, and kind of with where the college game was headed. And I kind of want to ask a couple coaches, uh, you know, where they think the college game is at and where how they feel about you know the, the direction that it's headed. So I may throw that out there at some point. That's fine. Uh, what thirty years ago? Uh, do you have all his? Does he have a Twitter? Uh, let me see. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a Twitter. What uh, what y'all got planned? Normal week, rest of this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just trying to trying to just work ahead. That's kind of how it's going right now. Yeah. Hey. All right, you ready to get into it? Uh, yeah. All right. Welcome in to the Mind of a Coach podcast. These are your hosts, Coach Asa Duvall, Coach Nathan Moran, episode 33. Asa, I see you're repping the shirt. You're repping yeah. the gear. Yeah, got the gear on. Got the gear on right now. Episode 33, the Larry Bird episode. Um, yeah, I'm ready to get this thing rolling. How you doing, man? You good today? You're doing great. If you haven't done so, go buy a shirt at spreadshirt.com. Um, we can send you a link as well. DM us, um, something like that. We'd love to hook you guys up, maybe give you a discount as well. So just let us know, um, spreadshirt.com. But yeah, wow, I, I feel like I just did an ad there. <laughs> uh, do we have that in our bio, by the way? We should probably have that in our bio. No, I had it there, and then you removed it to put um, an episode there. I did? Oh, I, I do remember. Yeah, and then I just never put it back. So I do remember. I do remember that, that was We fun. honestly, we're going to add it back to the bio. So go check it out. Go buy a sticker or something. Yeah, a sticker or something. That was a little coffee mug. I think we have a coffee mug, don't we, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Support the brand. Support yes. the brand. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the love. Yeah, Asa, how are you doing, man? Uh, I'm good, dude. Alive and kicking. Been a been, you know, beautiful beautiful day here in Nashville. Uh, it's actually, uh, they said it may like snow tonight. Dude, it was snowing in Missouri and Indiana. Did you see Aaron's story? Uh, I didn't see Aaron's, no, but I saw some picture. I don't know who, who tweeted it, but somebody from Missouri. Yeah, somebody in the state of Missouri, like literally they had snow and then sun, like, you know, in the same day. I mean, this. I hope it doesn't snow. It is supposed to get like 35, though. Well, I guess that's coming this way, too, then. I mean, it was 70 degrees, just got done with a walk with my dog. I mean, yeah. goodness gracious. I uh, know. It's supposed to get back up like 75 tomorrow. But, you know, the, the weather in the south, dude, is just a different animal. It's got a mind of its own, and it does whatever it wants to do. But, yeah, I mean, it could be 70 for all we know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, so what, what do you got to get off your chest, dude? Do you have uh, something? Yeah. Today? So, all right. Uh, the, the golf game is not in complete shambles. It's not in complete shambles. I, I thought I was, I was worried about myself for a little bit. Uh, but I played three times last week, and I'm doing this new thing where I'm just – you remember when your shot was off when you were younger, you had to get in the gym, you were like – something's off i just got to go in work out the kinks and figure it out right mm. you just gotta you just gotta shoot a ton of them get your rhythm back so yeah. now what i'm doing in golf is i naturally hit this crazy fade just this ridiculous fade and i'm i'm aiming straight and i'm just figuring it out i am forcing my it might take me a year it might take me two it might take me three i may never get good at golf but i am forcing myself to hit the ball straight and i'm figuring it out and i finally broke 100 at the course that i've been playing recently on wow. saturday uh, yeah uh, it's been a struggle to break a hundred on that tough course, but uh, I finally did it. So I felt good about that. I had, I played around Friday, shot a 85, 80, 85 at a, uh, at a public course in Nashville. And then I went and played a little tougher course on Saturday. I shot a 96. So I finally broke a hundred at that, at that place. But, uh, so the golf game is not, is not in complete shambles at the moment. I, I thought it was for a little bit, but uh, it's okay. Hey, that's really good news, especially after you came in another week and we're talking about how it, it, I mean, it sounded like you weren't in a good place, but I, I do wasn't. have to ask, how are your club situations this spring? Do we still have all of them? We, we do. We do. I got some new irons. We still got, we, yeah, I haven't, uh, I've, I've, I've been known to break a couple clubs in the past. And so last year I wasn't playing with a six or a nine iron. I think I've said that before and I finally got a six <laughs> or a nine iron. And, uh, and so, yeah, I still got my, I still got my irons in my clubs. Nothing's been broken yet. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Well, hey, let's go ahead and get into it because I'm really excited to talk to our next guest. Um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. We say it every single podcast, but man, this one is special. This is this is home, huh? This is this is home, man. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right. What's up, guys? Coach, how are you doing? What's up, good. Coach? Am I good? We are Everybody's good. Great. How are you? Good. <laughs> hey, man, how about that picture behind the Asa? Muhammad Ali. You like that? In the Bison jersey, <laughs> <laughs> kept, kept it simple. Had to, had to, you know, kept it simple. I like it. 
I like it. Man, you guys are getting some dudes. You guys are getting some dudes over there at TSU, Asa. Yeah, we uh, on, on paper we're, uh, we're we're pretty excited about it. So we uh, we we got some dudes coming in. We think um, it, uh, it it should be fun. You know, obviously with the way this year went for us, um, you know, we're uh, we're excited for something new, something different. So, well, this um, year was an outlier. You can't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, chalking it up to COVID, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. you guys had an absurd amount of cases over at Lipscomb, didn't you? Y'all did. Yeah, it was <laughs> It was an interesting run. All you can do is laugh about it. Is that a cry? <laughs> <laughs> we just we go with the, we go with the former. Probably a good amount of probably a good amount of both at some point, I would imagine. Yeah, it was not a lot of fun. I would not want to do it again. I hope and pray we're getting close to getting behind all this. So, I'm yes, sure. I hope Yes, sir. Really tough on the kids, too. I mean, missing as much time or having to quarantine for 14 days at a time, even if you don't have it. I mean, I couldn't imagine being healthy and just sitting in my room as a college kid. I mean, that's that's tough in itself. Will, Will Pruitt was contact traced four times, 56 straight days. <laughs> that's Wait, unbelievable. Days. 56, and then he came back on day 57. We were getting ready to go to Arkansas. He came back on Wednesday. We're leaving on Friday. He's going to go and get to play. And he tested positive on day 57, so 21 more days. That is – oh, my goodness. So the moral of the story is quarantining did not work in his safety. No, it did not. (laughs) He he never – those first – I mean, like some of the stuff they were contact tracing with was crazy. But but everybody's got a story. It is what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, well, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Um, Yeah. Guys, our first guest, or not our first guest, one of our biggest guests, the place where Asa and I played, the new head coach. He's been there two years, going on three upcoming. Um, coach Lenny Acuff. Coach Acuff um, played college basketball, actually, at Shorter University. He still holds the single game, single season, and career assist totals at Shorter, where we, he was also inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2011. Coach Acuff received his first coaching gig at the mere age of 25, which was the youngest at the time in a four-year institution at Bellhaven College in Jackson, Mississippi. After Bellhaven, he took the Berry College head coaching position for four years while taking them to back-to-back 21 seasons. He then returned back to his home, hometown, Huntsville, Alabama, where he took the UAH head coaching position, Alabama-Huntsville, for those who don't know. While there, he racked up eight, eight, eight GSC regular season championships three tourney championships. He was the coach of the year in the GSC South eight times. While in the NCAA tournament, he made five first rounds, one second round appearance, three sweet 16 appearances, and two elite eight appearances. Coach Acuff took the Lipscomb University job in 2019, where he led the Bisons to an, uh, what is it, a son? I'm all over the place. I'm in the GSC now. I play in the A-Sun. Yeah, yeah to the a son tournament final in year one coach Acuff is also married to wife kelly and two children will and molly um i could have made it really short and just said coach Acuff. for those who don't know really really good coach and you read it yourself but coach Acuff, we're so lucky to have you on thank you for joining us well thank you for having me i think i've, I've listened i was kind of getting paranoid i didn't think i thought it was like something personal well you got you're just mowing down the guys on my staff and <laughs> the guys from down the street. And I'm like, man, that, they must not want any part of listening to this old boy. And I, and I don't blame you. You had some good guys on. But, no, I'm glad to be here and started to be with two former Bisons. Yes, sir. Well, hey, it was definitely not personal. I want to be very clear about that. It was more <laughs> we didn't think we had the ability to get any head coaches on here during the season. Yeah, it's, yeah, kind of tough during the season. Kind of tough during the season. <laughs> how's uh, hey, how's Lipscomb been? First two years there. How, uh, how's it been? You know, I say it, it's been really good. Um, you know, you guys both went to school here, and I learned real quick that uh, some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life are involved with Lipscomb University. Um, 100%. Really, really, really high quality, high character people on our campus. Uh, in our athletic department. Uh, it starts at the top with our AD, Philip Hudson. Uh, he is a 10-plus leader, administrator, uh, connector in every way. And I've uh, been really fortunate to have a good staff. And so it's been good. You know, to say it's, has, that it has been easy would be dishonest. I wouldn't do that. Um, you know, we took over a, 
Uh, most of the time when you take over a job, or not most of the time, but a lot of times you take over a job, uh, there's been struggles, there hadn't been as much success as they'd like to have. Well, we came in after you guys had had the greatest year in the history of Lipscomb Division One basketball. And uh, so that was that's a real challenge, you know, when, when you're taking over somewhere that the bar's been set really high. And then, and then also with the fact that the majority of the guys that were involved in that run are gone. And so, but, but, it, but it's been really good for me. It's been healthy. It's been challenging. It's, and, I, and I think it's helped me grow. Absolutely. What would you say is the biggest adjustment that you've had moving from Division II basketball to Division I? Yeah, you know, you and I got to visit a little bit about this yesterday, Nathan. I, 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 think, I think the first thing is recruiting. Um, you know, I felt like we had gotten in our program in a position at Huntsville that if a kid didn't get a Division I offer, our chances of getting him were pretty good. You know, we had mm-hmm. developed a, a strong culture, strong fan base, kind of a unique situation for Division II basketball. Uh, we were the only show in town, uh, which I'm learning is real different here, you know. It is. Um, and so in a big city, we still were kind of the big fish. And so, but now when you get here, <clears throat> kind of the, the guys that land in our lane, I show up to go, well, I hope I get to go see them play at some point. I haven't been out recruiting in 14 months, but once we get to go back out in June, you know, you show up and it, there's, there's Lipscomb and there's Belmont and there's Furman and there's Wofford and there's William and Mary and there's Mercer uh, there's Davidson, you know, a lot of like-minded schools. Well, you're just hoping you can get a visit. I mean, you know, all those schools have great coaches, great programs, great winning tradition. And so you're in there slugging it out against some awfully strong uh, programs and, and head coaches. I've heard uh, I've heard some coaches say that they kind of they kind of like not getting out on the road and just doing Zoom calls with uh, with recruits. Do you do you like that? Are you ready to get back all uh, get back uh, on the road? I, I don't, not at all, Asa. That's a good <laughs> question. I, 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 the thing that – the hardest thing for me, I, I'm fine conversing through Zoom, but I really like to sit in front of a kid. I like to sit in front of his family. And before we ever get to that point, I want to see him play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got four new kids coming in this year that will be here in June, and I've never seen him dribble a ball uh, in person. And really? so – uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've watched them on film. We've watched a lot of tape or whatever it may be, but I've never seen any of them live. And that's a real challenge. I, I mean, just to, to know what you're getting. I, I, I'm, I, I really like to see kids a lot. Uh, I think that some of the uh, – it's almost like your, your culture is that's us, that's not us. I think when you're looking for players, you're trying to find guys that, that fit so many different categories, and the more you watch them – you can check those boxes off. So, but I'm looking forward to get back out this summer. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. So you're, so you're 25 years old, you get hired. What's going through your mind? Well, you know, what they said, the stages of learning is, is not knowing what you don't know. That, that, was the, that was the first thing, and that's where I was. I was incompetently incompetent. incompetent. <clears throat> I had no idea what I was doing. And, uh, and I will tell you guys, um, and I'm really, really, in all sincerity, I'm really proud of you guys for what you're doing and investing in basketball. And this is a great jump start for you guys. But, you know, this will be, I'll be going, I was spent the afternoon with Steve Prohm, who was the head coach at Iowa State the last few years. And he's actually thinking about moving to Nashville. And he came through and we got to spend a long time talking. And, and just every day you learn new things. And he said a couple of things I, I wrote down. I'm like, that's so important. So so there's I was really some really good nuggets, but the longer I do it, the more I realize I don't know. I mean, every single year there's things like I never thought about that. Why, why didn't we do this? We were talking about something one of the teams did to us this year that I've never seen. Mm-hmm. And and I think when I got that job at 25 Ace, I, I was just it, it, a couple of things. The first thing is I was I was running blind because I had no idea what I was doing. But you know what? I was going full speed. Mm-hmm. And I was really thankful for the opportunity. I, I, uh, you know, I, I tell guys all the time, you know, when you get a job, I mean, you treat that job like it's the Duke job, it's the Kentucky job. And to me, that was it. You know, but for these, for those kids, there's no do-over. There's no dress rehearsal. I mean, this you need to make. And I, there's a great book by Frosty Westring, "Make the Big Time Where You Are." And, and that's what I really tried to do. I tried to improve the program and uh, made a lot, a lot of mistakes like I still do. But it sure wasn't because of lack of effort and excitement. 
What's something? What's something you would uh, you would have told your younger self now? Uh, you can't coach every play. Yeah. You know, you, every single possession can't be the apocalypse. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to outcoach a lot of people. You better get you some players. Um, don't ever underestimate culture. Um, I don't think you can outcoach people, but I do think you can outculture people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's really, really, really hard to win if you don't have the kind of culture that you're comfortable in. Um, and then also just – and, and I think I, I've, if I've done one thing right, I think I've tried to do this is just be a lifelong learner. Mm-hmm. I mean, just mm-hmm. every single day, what can we do to get better? Um, you know, the same thing we talked to our team about is just stay the course. Um, but, but also, I guess the last thing and probably the most important thing is just value the friendships and relationships that you build. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked to one of my former players today for a long time and another one's coming up tomorrow to have lunch and, you know, that's what really makes it special. The older you get, that's what you really start realizing, wow, I was really blessed to be a part of some of these people's lives. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's switch gears real quick. So when Roy Williams uh, retired, I, I saw – I read somewhere where he, uh, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't so sure about the name, image, and likeness bill that's, uh, you know, that they're about to pass. And he, I guess he had some uh, concerns about where the college game was heading. Where, where do you see the college game at right now, and where do you see it, it going? Yeah, I listened to a, a really good interview with him about a week ago that, that somebody did, and it was about 15 minutes, and he was real transparent. He just said that there are some things in the college game now he's not comfortable with. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think for the level we're at, I, I'm not sure how much name, image, and likeness is going to, you know, be a big factor of what we're doing. But I do uh, serve on the board of directors with NABC, Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of privy to some conversations that really doesn't – they didn't really enter my world, but they sure enter college basketball's world. And uh, I think there's going to be some real challenges, real, real, real challenges, things no one's ever thought of. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of one-time transfers. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying kids don't make mistakes, but I, I think you, you, it's really, really going to make it difficult from low to mid-major Division One basketball to be able to, to build a program – uh, to be able to keep your best players, I think that's a real challenge. And, you know, even for guys, you know, native Division Two, I actually – one of the guys I talked to today was my assistant when we went to back-to-back Elite Eights. And I had two pros on our team. And uh, one of them's played in the NBA and another one has played for a long time in Italy. And, and he said, do you think we could have kept those guys? And I said, probably not. You know, if they knew they could leave right away and they were great kids and really committed to us. But – you know, who doesn't want to play on, on national TV every night? Who doesn't want to be a part of, you know, giving, getting a cost of attendance, uh, things that you can't do at some of those levels? And mm-hmm. so it, it, our, our game is going through a real change for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So going back a little bit to your UAH days. All right. So you're in the process of building the culture at UAH. If there was one word or phrase – you would want your players to know during that time or that you could go back and that's what you really try to get your players to know, what would it have been? Fit. Both ways. Both ways. Um, you know, I don't – you guys may have not know this, but when we went to Huntsville, I, I grew up there and went off to college and came back. Um, they had had one winning season in 13 years – 16 years. 16 years. 15 out of 16 years they had losing seasons. Oh, and that God. one year they were 13 and 12. So that was a winning season. So, um, you know, Nathan, you got to play down there this year under very abnormal circumstances. But what we really tried to do is every day make our – we really felt like it was important to make our program important. The the three things we we, we put on our board, and uh, one of my guys, my first assistant has been at Iowa State the last six years, and he was working for me. On our board in my office, it says important, fun, and a vehicle for improvement. That was the three things we said, make it important, make it fun, and let's be a vehicle for improvement. And so, you know, I, I will tell you, and I'm, I'm, I'm relearning this, I guess, at Lipscomb, it just takes time. It, it, it just takes time. And, and, but you can't do it with kids that don't fit. It, every place has a fit. Every place has a lane that they're better in. And I think if you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole, eventually it'll blow up on you. Mm-hmm. And so I think fit 
guys that I wanted to coach, guys that wanted to be coached, guys that wanted to be at Huntsville, guys that didn't think they were too good to be in Division II. All those things, I think, blended together. And a lot of people see it or when saw it when I left and see where they are now and think, oh, wow, that's great. I mean, when we went there, I mean, there was zero interest in the program. And so we had to try to make it important and now, you know, to see where they are with their fan support and the energy that's in that building every night. I'm really, really thankful for that. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, your basketball journey as a player, uh, you know, high school growing up and then how you, uh, how you got the shorter and then tell us about that experience. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really interesting. I um, grew up in Huntsville and I played at Johnson High School which when I was going through there was, it was really a special time there. It was a tremendously diverse high school um, with a tremendous athletic program and uh, kind of an interesting tidbit that I think has really helped me as a coach and to be able to understand the importance of diversity and enter other people's world. I was the only white guy to play on the, the high school team for probably nine or 10 years. Um, and so growing up um, in a very diverse um, environment, I think has really helped me. And, and I will tell you, I play, and you know, it's funny how things work out. I went to Faulkner University in Montgomery out of high school. And so I, I learned a lot, guys. I've kind of seen it in every facet. After my first, I started every game as a freshman there. But even in the four years that I'm getting to, I never played on a college team that was better than my high school team. We had like 10 scholarship guys, and we had some dudes. I mean, really, really good players. So I go to Faulkner and I start there every game. Well, the head coach gets fired at the end of the season. And the AD walks in, and I'm 19 years old. Uh, my dad's worked in a plant for 30-something years. Um, I'm able to go to college because I'm on scholarship. And the, the AD walks in and says, everybody's scholarship's gone. And so you're sitting there, and you're 19 years old. And, you know, it's not like I'm the most connected guy in the world. And there's I'm a five foot eleven you know, guard that loves to play ball. And, uh, but, you know, it was not great, just pretty good. And so um, I had to leave. Uh, that was unique. Um, and so I went to Columbia State Junior College right down the road. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I sure did. I, I missed was that one out. State Charger. Uh, wow, I did not. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how did that, how'd that transpire? Well, they had actually <laughs> recruited me. I, I I was probably a better – I wasn't great at anything, but I was probably a better baseball player than I was a basketball player. Uh -huh. And there had been some interest for me to go play baseball there. They were really, really good at baseball at the time. Okay. And, um, and I had several opportunities to play both, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted just to play basketball. I said I'll never graduate if I'm trying to play both sports. And mm -hmm. so I said, let's just take a – you know, hit a reset. So I went to Columbia State. I was there one year, loved it. Had a really good team, had a good experience. Learned a lot. Juco balls, a whole another world. Who was your coach? Uh, a guy named Ron Harris was my coach. Okay. And uh, I was there for one year, and I left there, and I signed with Shorter, which is in Rome, Georgia. Now is in the Gulf South with uh, <laughs> Lee and those guys. Lee and those guys, and and that was really a, a pivotal time in my life because I, I really was able. To, I I never really been. Um, in that kind of environment, you know, it was very a, a smaller school. I like Lipscomb, you know, mm -hmm. not a huge campus, uh, faith-based institution. It's where I really started learning what what it meant to be a Christian instead of just talking about it, learning how to try to live it. You know, every day we fall short, but uh, made lifelong friends, had a great, great, great experience, and uh, and so that's how it played out. But I so I learned kind of the business side of college basketball at 19, you know, that your coach gets fired, they take your scholarship, and, you know, it's kind of all hands on deck just trying to get through school. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about – you mentioned faith. Tell me a little bit about how your faith has impacted your coaching. Wow. You know, I, I think um, for me um, just understanding – I think if it's done anything, it's kept me grounded. Mm. That to understand there's so many more important things in life than winning and losing basketball games. Now, the night you're playing and when you're in the middle of it, that's hard to remember. Um, and, and I think also for me, it's really important that the way I behave, the way I interact with my team, the way I communicate with them, the way I carry myself on the sidelines, I, I, I want to be a good witness. I don't want to do anything that, 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 uh, 
that impacts what I, what I want to stand for as a man in the wrong mm-hmm. way. And so I think always trying to understand, you know, you, you really are representing a lot more than what's on the front of that jersey, which is a big deal. But also understanding that, that if you're going to step out and say this is who I am as a man, that you need to try to live that out. So can you talk to us about the grit and grind of a uh, junior college experience real quick? Yeah, you know, Asa, it kind was – Kind of the, how, how different it is, you know, compared to, uh, you know, yeah. other places. It, it was so good for me. It was so good for me because, I mean, you know, you – I mean, and boy, there were some really good players when I was there, and we had a good team, and uh, but it was dog eat dog. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was about thirteen or fourteen guys that could really play. Uh, several of those guys had been to several places and been around, and uh, we lived at the top of a hill up above the baseball field, and there was these apartments, and everybody had got a roommate, and let's just say it wasn't the greatest of living accommodations, but it was just, it it really taught me a lot about being thankful for being grateful. Um, You know, pregame meal was a sack lunch the cafeteria gave you on the bus and postgame meal, the other team gave you a sack lunch, sack sandwich to go home in. That was it. That's what we had. Yeah. And you know what? You didn't think a thing about it. Yeah. You know, if you really wanted to play ball, that's what you did. And I, and I needed to do it because I wanted to graduate from college and I know I needed to get a scholarship and, you know, you knew every night you went out there, you needed to play well because you never knew who was going to be there. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, did you see um, Last Chance You basketball? Did you watch any any Netflix? Yeah, we're watching it. My wife and I are watching it. Yeah, and I mean, it, it really. I, I tell people all the time. I'm glad they're doing that. Yeah. I've always said there should be a movie about JUCO basketball. Yeah, and but you, but I tell you who who, who if a kid will go to junior college, he wants to play. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no entitlement in junior college. And, and if you have it, you're going to lose it real quick. You know, the, you, there's, you will be humble. And, uh, and there's some guys down there that, I mean, you know, you're fighting, scratching, clawing, try to keep your career alive. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. It, it, it was a great experience for me. Okay. What, yeah. what, was, the, what was the biggest thing you took uh, maybe, like, from your playing days, that maybe a way that you were as a player that you carried along with you to, you know, you, you, you now as a coach? That, yeah, I, let, let me. I'm gonna give you a little little perspective here. My, my college coach passed away two years ago. I actually spoke at his funeral. My coach at Shorter, and um, I, I my high school coach was a highly highly successful coach. Did a great job. Um, I have never ever ever been coached as hard as I was when I went to Shorter. Um, he was brutal. I mean, he was he was brutal. I'm sorry. What, was, and what was his name? Uh, Hamp Alexander, his last name, Coach Alexander. And I've never been talked to like that guy. Never. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, that, I mean, it was unbelievable. But but I will tell you this, because he coached me so hard, I improved amazingly in the two years I was there. Mm-hmm. The things that, that, that were non-negotiables for him by the time I finished my first year there and for sure going into my senior year, they didn't happen. You didn't turn it over. You didn't take a bad shot. You didn't get blown by on defense. And whatever the scout report says, you did it. Mm-hmm. And now – but I, I, I will say I probably took from him that I didn't want to coach like that. That's not who I am. I, I had to realize mm-hmm. that's not who I was. Um, and I thought he was incredible. I mean, he was a fantastic coach, and I learned a ton about basketball. But there were guys he just locked up. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they couldn't play. and. Um, you have to be able to think and play. You can't be just thinking and you can't be just playing. You have to be able to marry the two. And I think a lot of times when – I mean, he was rough. I mean, to the point my parents would come to the game, my mom would sit on the other side of the gym uh, because he would take you hostage now. And um, and it didn't matter who you were. And I I did learn that now. There was no pecking order. Like, Mm -hmm. if you're you're the best player, you're going to get coached every bit as hard as the worst player. Mm -hmm. Like, he – lit into everybody but but I learned that you can't be a really good player if you have bench out mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. You, you if you're out there you need to play you don't need to be looking at me and you need and 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 kids are going to do that some just because if you're short if you're at the back end of the rotation you're going to worry a little bit about the bench but I try really hard for guys not to do that mm-hmm. and, and I also know that you know sometimes he would say some things that you know you had to have pretty thick skin and um that's just not who i am i, I don't and and I, and and but i learned a lot just from him and just things you want to do and maybe things you don't want to do mm-hmm. yes sir so 
you said that he was pretty strict on the basically the decision making process and yep. not a bad shot. Need to make an extra pass. Kind of sounds like that's what you were leading into. So yep. um, I talked to Coach Eastrom and he mentioned that you guys were tracking passes. Did that come from him, or where did that come from, or what led into that decision making process? Well, I wish I could tell you it came from him, and I wish I could tell you I was smart enough to come up with that. <laughs> but um, but those guys that worked with me, they're the ones that kind of came up with it, and um. And and I would like I was actually sharing with Steve Prom today, um, the our percentages, five passes or more versus three passes or less, and it's astronomical. I mean, and well, we, we were, I ended up charting it for us. Did you? Because and, I was like, I gotta check this out. Yeah. Uh, how, did Did you get some fruit from it? There was. It was yeah. good. It was good. Yeah. And and I I I just think the biggest thing when you're when you're trying to get a good shot. At the end of the day, the ball's got to move, players got to move, it's got to be on time, it's got to be on target. And if they just if they only have to guard one or two passes, unless you're just a lot better than who you're playing, your shot chart, shot difficulty is going to be really, really poor. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, I, I just think you have to know what wins. You have to decide what's non-negotiable. Like every night before we play, we put four things on the board. It's the same four things I put up there for 30 years. We want to defend every possession. You know, we try to keep our opponents under 40%. That's always our goal. Defend every possession. Rebound both ends. Um, we want to get more than 10 and give up less than 10 offensive rebounds. We want to value the ball. Make simple, easy plays. It's singles, not doubles, triples, or home runs. Have less than 10 turnovers. And then get a quality shot. If we do those four things, we got a chance. And those mm-hmm. are the things that we kind of say are our pillars, and that's what we try to stay committed to. And those are tangibles. Obviously, you have to play hard. You have to have commitment to doing what's right as a team and all that. But I think those four things are things that we don't, we don't deviate from. At what point did you know you wanted to coach, and what made you want to coach? Yeah, it's a great question. My, uh, my dad uh, was a really, really, really good player. And uh, but he came from a tough, tough background, and uh, it was just him, he and my grandmother when he was growing up. And he had several chances to go play college basketball, but he couldn't because he had to get a job. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he never went to school. But he ended up playing in all these semi pro leagues. I remember going with him. All the people would hire him in their company because he would play for their their like uh, industrial league teams or whatever. Okay. And so he started coaching because he couldn't because he didn't have a degree. He had to he could just coach like youth league or whatever it would be. And he started coaching all my teams when I was little and he was just really good, really, really good at it. And I thought, you know what? I would love to have the chance to do that for a living. Um, What I learned from him when he had to do other things, he probably really didn't want to do. He always told me, he said, you know, getting a degree doesn't guarantee you're going to get to do what you're going to do, but it guarantees you don't have to do what you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I wanted to make sure I had a chance to do it. And he's the one that probably got me into it. And, um, and, and also, to be honest with you, I never could imagine not being involved in it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just love being a part of a team. I, I love, you know, there's not many nights I go to bed without thinking about our team or what we need to do. And, um, you know, it's just nothing like it. I, I, I think just um, thinking about what we're going to do when they get back in June and then how that's going to segue into the fall. I mean, I just – I love that part of it. Who were some guys early on in your career, other than, you know, obviously your father was pretty influential. Who were some yeah. coaches that you uh, kind of wanted to emulate your coaching style after? And, and what did you look for in, in, in those people? Yeah. Um, you know, ironically, one of the guys I coached against a lot, not a lot, but followed a lot and coached against a couple of years was Don Meyer when he was at Lipscomb. Mm-hmm. When I was at Barry, we were, my last year at Barry, we were in the league with him. Okay. And, uh, and I tell you a good story, and this was talking about being out cultured. Um, they came to play us at Barry my last year there, and they were number one or two in the country. And we played. We had a, I had a good team, and we played well. And um, it was tied with about eight minutes to go, and we ended up losing by twenty. Mm-hmm. And the reason was they outcultured us. They could just play harder, longer than we could play. Mm-hmm. They just were tougher, longer. They were together. They were more committed. And I told our guys after the game, I said, we just got out cultured. And, and I just – just his example was such a big deal to me. Um, I was really, really fortunate. This guy probably – y'all don't know who he is, but his name was a guy named Jimmy Tillett. I coached his son at Barry. 
And Jimmy Tillett was a head coach at Sanford for a long time, and he's as good a basketball coach as I've ever known. He was the first guy to ever get inside the Princeton offense outside of the Princeton family. And uh, – Guy, I learned so much basketball from him. Still talk to him, you know, and, and still lean on him. He's retired now, lives in New Orleans. And, um, you know, just – just uh, probably those two guys, you know, minus my high school and college coach are the guys that I probably say I learned as much from. I mean, I still have probably ten notebooks of Coach Meyer notes. You know, Do you? To, yeah, oh, yeah, coming to coaching clinics and things I learned from him is tapes and all that stuff. That's cool. That's so – I'm always interested, you know, you know, being a little older than, than we are, just who, who people kind of wanted to model their coaching style after. He, um, he was – like, you guys, he was a big deal now. And you right. guys being from around Nashville, like he – the whole basketball culture in Middle Tennessee and really a great part of the Southeast kind of kind of trickled away from Nashville. I mean, mm-hmm. from, from Lipscomb. Mm-hmm. Is, there were so many people like – he every every fall he had a free coaching clinic on a Friday and Saturday and there would be 500 high school coaches come in to watch. Wow. Uh, he had an academy in the spring that he would have over a thousand coaches at, and I mean it was just it was amazing the impact and influence he had. Coach, so you said you talked about being a lifelong learner, and you talked about these notebooks that you have done it like you've done it time and time and time again, yeah. and that's why you are where you are right now. What is something you are currently doing in order to grow? Uh, well, I think first off, you're always going to be a, a, a byproduct or a product of, of the books you read and the people you talk to. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, for us is trying to always, I'm actually reading atomic habits. Now I'm just getting started. I'm excited about that. I don't know if y'all have read that. What is it um, called again? Atomic, atomic habits. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And so I'm just getting started. Everybody's told me how good it was, but you know, I, I think like even today, I, I, I think the thing that we're always trying to do next week, we're going to start doing a deep dive into our team and, you know, what do we do well? What do we need to do better? What do we need to do to change? Because there's three things when things aren't going the way you, you that you want it to go. And we had an okay year. We finished third in the league, but we didn't play well down the stretch. Is It's what you're doing, who's doing it, and how you're doing it. Mm-hmm. It's one of those three things. If there's a problem, either you're not doing the right things or how you're doing it's not working or who you're doing it with isn't working. And Mm -hmm. so we need to evaluate our team from that standpoint. We need to evaluate what we're doing. We need to evaluate how we're doing it and who's doing it. And, um, and then I think also picking out other programs that you want to study, picking out other teams. Like I I, I talked to coach Smith at Lee the other day. I want to try to sit down with him because I, when I watch them defend, I think they really, really, really guard. I think you guys have a great plan and, Obviously, you do a lot of things that we do on offense and some things I would watch you guys play, and we try to steal from you guys some things you would do. And, um, you know, I, I think trying to figure out what, you have to decide what wins because winning is hard. It is really, really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And I don't care where you coach, if you're in the OVC, the Gulf South, or the A Sun, winning is hard. Absolutely. Uh, Nate, you got anything else uh, right now with the top? No, you want to hit them with some rapid fire? Yeah, hang on. Um, I was going to – oh, uh, Coach, for you real quick, what, just off the top, it doesn't have to be the biggest game you've played in, but what is the most fun game that, uh, that, that you can think of that you've been a part of? That I coached? Yeah, that you coached. That, like, yeah, that you coached. Uh, probably the first time we hosted a regional at Huntsville. Um, it's the first time they'd ever had a regional there. And we played in the championship game in the regional final, and they sold it out three days before. And you've been into the gym there now, Nate, at, at UAH. And it yes, was sir. standing room only. Um, I mean, jam-packed to the gills. And just to see our program come from where it was, it was probably like when you guys played Liberty in the conference championship game. Yes, you know, sir. To walk out there and you're like, wow, look at all these people. Yes, and, sir. And uh, we were able to win that. And so that, that was really, really cool. Two other ones that come to mind is – uh, we played Alabama the next year after that, and uh, they beat us in double overtime. We led the whole game and got beat in double overtime at Alabama. And then the next year, we were the first Division II team to be get invited to play in the preseason NIT, and uh, we beat North Texas that night. Yes, sir. And we beat them. They were picked to win the Sun Belt, and uh, they were God. top 25 in the country, and we beat them. And so that was a lot of fun. Now, now at Lipscomb, the, the, 
the probably I guess the best win we've had was um, we've had a couple of games we beat Liberty at home twice, but uh, winning at North Florida in the semifinals of the conference tournament last year, they were really, really, really good, and um, our boy Andrew Fleming stepped up and played like a pro. And uh, floater for the win, yeah, floater for the win for Fleming. Um, I told I him I was going crazy. <laughs> I told him he's gonna get a chapter in my book. Is I said it's the night Fleming broke bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I, and he was so good that night. I was real happy with the way it ended for him. But I guess those are a few off the top of my head. I got you. I got you. All right. Well, do you mind doing some rapid fire questions with us? Absolutely. The, uh, the, yeah. the not they, the not so rapid fire, I guess, as they always yeah. turn into. And, and, I, <laughs> and I guess as a as a precursor, people need to know I don't know what these questions are. Right. So if it takes yeah. me a little time, well, yeah, to, yeah, this that, is not pre rehearsed. That's totally okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, last technical. Last technical, probably four or five years ago. I Really? I don't know if I've ever got – I've been a head coach 30-something years. I don't know if I've ever had five. Really? So, so you've obviously never been kicked out of a game, yeah? No. No. Cool, calm, and collect. I, I, do th- I do think handling officials is a huge part of coaching, and I do think it's a lot more uh, psychological than people think. And if they like you, I think it goes a long way. So okay. I, well, I, I, I kind of want to wanted to expound on that and, and say what's your method for handling uh, handling officials. Well, I, I think like everybody, they like to be talked to, not yelled at. Yeah. Um, I think they also uh, want to be respected. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want to be treated the way they want to be treated. Now, there's a time, you know, that you and and I think also, and I'm not saying I don't ever get onto them or you know challenge them, but you got to know when to back off a little bit too. You know, mm-hmm. you got to have feel for all right, I've probably pushed this guy pretty hard. Mm-hmm. And it's my and it, it, But I think it's also important your team understands that you're standing up for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, okay, uh, ever done to basketball on a 10-foot rim? Uh, the answer to that would be no. And God, okay. I want to so bad. <laughs> back, <laughs> back in my, a real close, y'all. You know, the kind of the thing where, you know, Tennis you, ball. You know, you got – oh, I could do that now. Easy. Okay. <laughs> but, 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 you know, you got the guy that can throw the perfect lob, and all I could ever do is hit the back of the rim. Oh, I just get it out. Yeah. I mean, y'all been there, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I definitely have. I yeah. Definitely. I, I just, no, nah, never happened. Never. And, and I played with some really athletic guys in high school, you know, before the referees got out there, they would dump and it was show city. And I just, I never got to be a part of that. There was, <laughs> I, I, there was about a year in my life where I could, you know, I never had an in-game dunk, but there was about a year in my life where I could walk into a gym and legitimately dunk it. But Love other it. than that, I just got top heavy. I, 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 yeah, that, that's just something, you know, that, that ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, foul up. Okay. At the end of a game, you're up three. Do you foul or let it play out? Yeah, we foul. Okay. We foul because I've lost a lot not fouling. Got gotcha. you. Know, gotcha. Some of my biggest losses is when I didn't foul. Um, it always seems to happen that way. It always seems yeah, to happen. I, I, my, my lean is to foul. Now, that's not foolproof. Yeah. But my lean is to foul. Got you. Uh, leave your best so player. Next year, if y'all are up three, when y'all come across town, yeah. I hope we can keep it within three. So you, <laughs> might, you, might, you might want to tell Penny, hey, they're going to foul. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're not going to that time. That's right. Yeah, now, now <laughs> a lot of different balls in the mind game. <laughs> this is mind game. That's all this is. Uh, yep. Okay, leave your best player in with two fouls in the first half. Uh, I'll take him out, but I'll put him back in if need be. Okay. Yeah, that, that's not a hard, fast route. Now, I will take him out unless it's just an outlier situation. We, You know, Asan has been so important to us. The last two years, we've played him a good bit with two fouls. Now, as long as we can hang in there, but I, but I do think you can lose a game in the first half too. Yeah, and I try not to do that because of fouls. Mm-hmm. Uh, go for the tie. Or go for the win. On the road, go for the win. At home, go for the tie. Uh, casual or professional on the sidelines? Casual. I am such a big fan of what we did this year. <laughs> oh my gosh! So easy. Like guys, it's just so much easier to pack. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yes. And yes. that hit home right there. No, yeah, that, that went absolutely. Oh, that hit home. You know, like if we were like my first year, we're like we'd play at 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 Jacksonville or North Florida, and you got you know you're down there four days. Well, you got like three. You got your practice stuff. You got mm-hmm. your casual stuff. Then you got your suit. Well, what shoes am I going to wear? Which no, oh, I'm <laughs> all in. Unless and I, I'm just hoping and praying some of the big timers don't go back to suits because I do not want to go back to suits. <laughs> you know, and hey, you know this before I came to Lipscomb, 
I was about 95% sweater vest. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I had to shut that down, man. I, I didn't want to come up here and start acting like Rick Bird. Yeah. I, you I couldn't, you couldn't try. <laughs> now you, Hey, you do not swim in those waters. There's a, yeah, there's <laughs> only, there's only room for one sweater yes, vest in Nashville. There is no doubt. And I love Coach Bird. <laughs> He's been so good to me. So there's no shot. I was breaking that out here. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but smart, man. Yeah. But I, I pretty much landed on that, you know, and, and, and Nate knows this and those D2 deals, man, the locker rooms can get a little tight. Right. And so, yes. so I would, I, I'd slip that sweater vest. I, I'd wear some slacks and a, and, a, and, a, and a polo and then put that sweater vest on. I'm ready to roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Early morning or evening or night practice. Uh, I really like afternoon. I, I'm not, I, I think there's a time for early morning, not a big fan of it. I think the thing about kids in college, they're going to stay up whether you're practicing at six in the morning or six at night. Right. right. And, uh, I, I think I, times we've done it, I felt like we're just checking the box. Right. And so I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. That makes sense. Uh, okay. If you could not coach basketball or be in the world of sports, what would you do? I'd be, I would have my own radio show and I still want to have my own radio show. That's yeah. what I want to do. That's when I'm done coaching. I'm going to have you guys on my radio show. We'll do like once a week. We'll sell advertisement and have that segment. Sign me up. Oh, man. Well, yeah. you know what? We'll just say we'll call our podcast Mind of Coach A Cuff, and you can just come join our podcast and be a host. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> Obviously, you want to be a sports radio show or uh, or just kind of get on. And, oh, we'll and, talk about it all. Oh, oh I'm in. Yeah. I am oh, in, Coach. Yeah, That's what I want to do. I want to have my own radio show. I, I want to coach. I hope I can coach another eight or nine years. That's what I hope. And uh, and then I want to have a radio show. I'm I'm in. I'm on board. Sign me up. I'm bought in. <laughs> I got to learn how to do all this technical stuff you guys are doing. I'm so proud I can do Zoom. So I. <laughs> but but if you're gonna make any money in those radio shows, you got to learn how to do remotes. Yeah, right. You, know, you got to right. be able to go off site and all that. But that's Nate, what I want uh, Nate and I can help you out a little bit with the technology side of it. We uh, I like it. there we go. We got it. We got a we got a a, a, a business venture. Uh -huh. out, there, out in the future oh this is great i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. excited already uh okay uh what's your handicap in golf uh well before we had children it was probably about a 10 maybe. <laughs> yeah yeah now that's not no nah, if i if i could go break 90 i would be happy i, I haven't i've not played sure. very much since i've been up here really yeah, yeah. yeah some good courses around here yeah uh, are, i need to get there certainly uh should every team make the conference tourney that's a great question. That's, that's my, probably if I'm being totally honest, no. Okay. No, no. Wow. I, 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 well, I, I, it's what I've learned. I've learned the good of it and the bad of it is at this level, it's all about the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. Like you mm -hmm. like my first year here, I thought we were just okay. We finished third in the league, but we played really well in the tournament, got beaten the championship game. And everybody thinks we had a great year. Yeah. This year, we actually had a better winning percentage, finished third again, and were awful in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And the perception is you had a terrible, a terrible year. I, I, I just, I think, I think any value you can put on the regular season. I love what the OVC does. I love how you can get a home game. But I, I would like to take the final four to one side. I like that. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I, I do think rewarding regular season performance is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, last one, uh, LeBron or Jordan? Oh, man, that's, I, 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 think, I, I do think LeBron is a better overall player. I think Jordan was better offensively. Gotcha. He was, he was good. Now, he's well above y'all's time, but he was, <laughs> he was really good. I like that answer. I like that answer. I appreciate that. That uh, was probably Ace's favorite answer because every person <laughs> we bring on here says Jordan without, like, a bat of an eye. So. They, 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 they just scoff at me every time. No, and I'm not, and honestly, well, yeah, I, 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 I'm not a huge, huge, huge LeBron fan, but I think he is a well of a player. Okay. All right. Well, then yeah, I'll I, you know what he does everywhere he goes, they win. Absolutely. They do. They, they, yeah. they do. And that's the name of the game, right? Yeah. That's it. Last time I checked. <laughs> that's all I got, coach. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, well, yes. hey, I tell you what, uh, we appreciate you coming on tonight. It was a blast to talk to you. Uh, cannot wait to start our own radio show in the future. Uh, yep. We just go ahead and pencil in for what's this? We're in 2000, so 2030. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Coach's corner. I'm putting putting it down on the uh, on the go. on the reminders right now. Yep. Make sure you get that <laughs> April the 20th, 2030.
We got it. We got it. Well, uh, hey, where can uh, everybody, you got a Twitter, Instagram, anybody can find you on social media? I don't know about that. I do have Twitter. Let me, I don't know. Hang on. Let me ask Kelly, what is my Twitter thing? What's I'll tell you thing? what. I looked it up. I think it's, I think it's just coach. Uh, I think it's just coach Acuff or. Yeah. You can tell that's really a big part of my life. Yeah. It, it's, and <laughs> I am on Facebook too is what my wife just said. Now I never put anything on Facebook unless it has something to do with my kids or something or I do. I will sometimes retweet something about one of our players. Yeah. Well, if you want to find Coach Acuff, you can find him at Coach Acuff on Twitter. You can also follow Lipscomb Men's Basketball. Um, best of luck to y'all next season. Uh, you can find myself on Instagram at the Ace of Spades with a Z on the end. You can find Nathan on Instagram and Twitter at Nate Five underscore Moran. You can find Mind of a Coach on Twitter at Mind of a Coach One, and you can also find us on Instagram at Mind of a Coach. Uh, Coach Acuff, again, thank you, thank you, sir. We we really appreciate it. Awesome, proud of you guys. Thank you. Thank you.